E80 Corolla engine that we previously tore down in another video. So I'll just give you a uh, quick update on this engine. We are going to be rebuilding the bottom end on this. Uh, we've put the cylinder head back on it as is and everything measures perfectly and I'm happy with that. All the valves have been lapped in and whatnot. But the uh, main issue with this engine was the, uh, the bearing clearance and the crankshaft has got some significant wear on it. So I'll show you this is the crank that came out which is the half counterweight crank and we've gone ahead and measured it. I wouldn't want to run this crank again unless I really really had to but seeing as these cranks are super available super easy to get this one came out of a 40 FE starlet and this is the full counterweight crank so it's a stronger crank and this one measures absolutely perfect everything on this is miles better. So we went ahead and purchased some bearings off uh, eBay and these were branded as Taiho bearings and this is the original one that came out of the engine. And this is the uh, Taiho logo. So you know that this is... That must be good. Yeah, so you, th you think, let's go ahead and purchase those same bearings. You see it's got that same logo. But these are cheap shit compared to the original ones. They are bendy and floppy. They feel rubbish in the housing. They just sort of fall out. Compared to the original ones, this has a much tighter fit. And the uh, steel is generally much harder on these. They have a better surface finish on the actual Babbitt material as well. These ones you can actually see some machining marks in there. They're just not a very nice bearing. The other problem with these cheaper bearings was that when we assembled the engine, there was absolutely no bearing clearance whatsoever. So uh, unfortunately I've had to bite the bullet and repurchase these bearings. So I've gone with ACL. I've had good luck with these bearings, so we're just going to run these and recheck everything and make sure our clearances are good. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So here we have the uh, knockoff main and the OEM Toyota main. As you can see, they both have that same logo on them. But the knockoff one, you can see the machining is just rough. They've extended this oil groove down here, whether it was on the Toyota one, if you ignore the wear, that is not present. So a lot of bearing manufacturers do this, but you can just see how crooked the tooling is. It is crap. Okay, so here we have our internal diameters measured and our crank measured. I've jotted everything down on this piece of paper. So here we have our crank measurements. These are our bearing measurements. So the crank you can see here, this one is a little bit smaller than the rest, but that is still well within spec. Now the rod bearing is absolutely perfect. So we measured the internal diameters and they are very consistent. 
Number five again is just a fraction bigger, but that is still well within spec. The rods are absolutely perfect. And from there, we can work out our clearance simply by subtracting the crank from the bearings. So we are pretty much falling between 0.02 and 0.03 of a millimeter on the rod bearings, sorry, on the main bearings. And we are allowed on the main bearing journal clearance 0.016 to 0.049. So we're happy there. Rod bearings are pretty much bang on 0.03. And if we take a look at the big end journal diameters, again that is 0.16 to 0.48. So we are pretty much bang on. Something worthy of note with the old crank was this is well worn out of spec. So you can see this minimum diameter here needs to be 46.985, and this is smaller than that, as is that, and that, and that one. That one there is okay, this one's not too good. That one there, so they're all pretty, all pretty worn. But this was not the uh, original reason why the engine got pulled down, it was actually a head gasket failure. So it's a good thing that we're doing this anyway, so yeah, let's get cracking. Okay, so after all that work, we finally got our 4E crank into the 2E engine. Everything rotates nicely, so I can turn that pretty easily by hand. Now, this side of the engine will still need to be reassembled, so the oil pump and whatnot needs to be assembled properly. Now, we got our flywheel torque down, so that just needs a clutch on the end of that. And, of course, we need the oil pickup and sump. And that's pretty much it. This engine's pretty much ready to run. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.